Jesus rebound inside. Jamari Walker's got it. Boy, he's a great rebounder. Pushes up court right to left. Slows up. Juzang on him. Crosses over. Drives away to paint. Spins. Wow. Lays it up with the right hand. Wow. Oh, what a play by Jabari Walker. Came knifing in. Off of pick once again. The roll. Bounces off. Gives up. And elevating and slamming with two hands was Jabari with the jam. There's some highlights of Jabari Walker at UCLA. Buffs end up losing to number five in the country. Jabari was unbelievable. 22 points, 11 rebounds in that ballgame. His fourth consecutive game with a double-double. My broadcast partner, Scott Wilkie, Busk right here, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Let's go back to that UCLA game a little bit. This has been an interesting stretch for this young basketball team. Very high-level competition. What are you taking away from what you're seeing so far? Well, you mentioned Jabari Walker. It's not just the numbers. It's better defense, better effort I've seen from him. And in the second half against UCLA, young players learning how to play against top competition. You know, it's interesting, though. There was a stretch, because Colorado was right in the middle of that thing. There was a stretch for about six minutes. UCLA goes on an 11-0 run. The last seven and a half, they were plus, I think, plus 14. And the Buffs had a hole to dig out in the second half. This team's got to learn those lessons about you can't have bad spurts against great teams. Yeah, and if, and if it's some of your own doing, like we see the Buffs doing, turning the ball over, missing free throws, et cetera, against a really quality team, they're going to take advantage, and they're going to uh, bury you with that. Yeah, Buffaloes end up dropping that contest against a top five team. And it's not like Colorado's not classed when you watch these kind of matchups. As talented as CU is, you can see the potential, but they just seem to make that inept play on occasion and dig themselves a hole and then find themselves, you know, coming from behind. Yeah, and foul trouble has been a part of our big, our big's rotation, uh, uh, taking them out of the game early in the game and playing with foul trouble turnovers, those things, you just kind of cut that out of your game. You're going to have some turnovers, but you can't have the self-inflicted ones, but you're doing that on your own. Yeah, you know, UCLA, Evan Batty ended up following out. They ended up playing like, what, 12, 13 minutes or something in the ballgame. Was taken totally out of that good ballgame becomes a foul. That's going to happen sometimes on the road. The difference between this team and what we saw last year when he had another guy, Deshaun Schwartz, a McKinley Wright, a Dallas Walton, a Jariah Horn. This team is still developing that aspect, that depth where, okay, when one of your leaders is gone, somebody else has got to step up. Yeah, with those guys like Deshaun Schwartz, you can kind of count on 8 to 12 points yeah. pretty much every game and five or six rebounds. We don't have guys that are that consistent yet. So guys come off the bench, you're not sure what you're going to get yet. Guys are capable. They're just the consistency's not there for Colorado right now. That's the UCLA game. Buffs, of course, as we talked earlier with uh, KJ Simpson, up falling by 15 to Tennessee. We heard from some of the Buffs players after the loss to the Vols. You know, we tried everything. We tried, you know, going under. We tried switching. We tried blocking. But we just got to do a better job. I got I to do a better job in uh, making sure I'm, just my team knows all the coverages, making sure uh, we're gapped up. I mean, I just got to do a better job, in my opinion. Four years here, I, I haven't lost very many games on my whole floor. And I uh, haven't lost many, many games against ranked, ranked opponents on my home floor. But, um... Definitely hurts. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a learning, learning opportunity uh, for me and my team. Um, we all got to do better, and I got to do better. You know, coach talked about it in the locker room. Basketball is a game of runs. Uh, started off pretty good, and then you got to take care of the ball uh, offensively. A everybody, I, I turn it over. You know, um, got to got to take care of the ball. Got to value the ball because otherwise we won't get shots up. We just. Uh, destroy our opportunity to score on offense and that's that's what it came down to in the, in the first half at least. There's some of your Buffs players after the bus fall by 15 to Tennessee on a Saturday afternoon here at the event center. We continue with Scott Wilkie, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. All right, this Tennessee game, similar, right? The second burst, same as the first, right? Same kind of things. Buffs had just moments where they got too many turnovers, especially in the first half. That really put them on hold against the balls. Yeah, today they came out. The effort was good early. They, had the, they got the lead early, but then they turned the ball over so many times. In that about 12 minutes of the end of the first half, they had 10 turnovers. You can't do that against a really good team like Tennessee. Yeah, they ended up only having three turnovers in the second half, but had 12 in that first half and played the bulk of that first half, by the way, without Jamari Walker. So really took him out, and he had no rhythm when he got back. Ended up in double figures. But once again, another guy got in foul trouble. For the yeah, you know, UCLA, it was Evan. Tonight it was Jabari Walker. And Jabari, you know, he's our leading rebounder, yeah. leading scorer. So to have him out of the game is tough for a young team without other guys that can step in and just produce. You know, we talked with K.J. Simpson in the previous segment, um, and he's growing. He's learning as a point guard. You know, we go back to year number one with McKinley. McKinley had moments where he was spectacular. He had moments when he looked like he was young as well. What are you seeing, K.J. Simpson? Yeah, well, we saw a spectacular play tonight with a yeah. dunk, and some other plays were 
he can change directions like no one else out on the floor. But we also see him dribbling into trouble, dribbling into the baseline, et cetera, and taking shots at the rim where shot blockers come, there's gotta be somebody open. So he's growing, he's gonna read those situations better, but the spectacular plays are really amazing. Yeah, he's got the flashes, the dunk we saw off the top of the show. We got another one coming in from the left side of the lane just to change the direction, left everybody with broken ankles out there. So he's got the potential is there, certainly. All right, Colorado's got three games coming up this week. You've got Eastern Washington, uh, then you've got uh, let's see, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, and then CSU Bakersfield before Kansas comes to town. They got a chance here to go a little bit of a run with some of the lessons learned. Yeah, and you've got to take advantage of teams that maybe you should win against and have a three-game winning streak. Take advantage of the home court because you got some Kansas Jayhawks coming out, yeah. coming to town. I know for bus fans, it's awful frustrating against a UCLA and against a team like Tennessee to come away with a loss. Young team figuring things out. They got a stretcher. They can make some noise before Kansas comes to town. Coming up next, a team that has got all the answers right now. Undefeated CU women's basketball. We'll talk with them coming up next.